We are back. It's a new day and we're working on the 125 again. So hoping today we can get it most of the way done. If not all, uh, we'll see how it goes. Not sure really how the videos are going to pan out, but uh, we're definitely going to be making some progress today and um, getting some stuff done on this thing. So right now, going to hop right in, get to work on it. We got some linkage bearings um, going in. I thought they would be okay when I first got the bike, but when I got it apart, they're absolutely trashed. So, gonna throw those in, and then uh, what else? I don't know. We got quite a bit to do though, and we're gonna get to work. the better. Everything has been going way too well on this build. And so that brings us to this wishbone here. You can't push the bearings through. So you have to either use a blind bearing puller, which I didn't have, but now I do. So <laughs> at least I got a tool out of the deal. Um, tried hitting it through with like a screwdriver and a punch and stuff. Did not work, just ended up like breaking the races. And so I didn't end up filming it because I was getting a little frustrated, but ended up getting the right tool and got a blind bearing puller. So was able to pull them out and still struggled with that. Had to heat up the outside and try it a couple times, but got them figured out. And so now we got bearings and both, um, both linkage parts. Time to put stuff together. Next up, I'm gonna rip off the uh, swing arm graphics here. Um, I've got graphics coming, but they aren't in yet. So that's unfortunate, but we're gonna rip these off and at least we'll have a clean bike. So. All right, so obviously, as you just saw there, we don't even need graphics. I just made my own, so. Those didn't come off at all like I wanted them to, but we may just take the power washer to it. On to the next thing now, which is putting on a new seat cover. So we're gonna get it out and put it on. Um, I haven't done this in a while, so maybe a little rusty putting seat covers on, but 
we'll get it on, figure it out, and then it should be looking a lot better. With our linkage bearing mishap there, we weren't able to finish the bike tonight, but tomorrow I'm gonna hit it and we're gonna get it done. So I cannot wait for this thing. It has been, I've spent all day, almost every day out here in the shop. So it's been a long time coming and I just hope this thing runs good because I put a lot of time in it, but um, hopefully we can get her done tomorrow and maybe go ride. That'll, that'll be another video. Stay tuned for that, but we'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's finish this thing up today. We got uh, not very much left to do. We got some plastics, a chain, some little stuff really. And then this thing will be ready to see if it starts. Once we get it together, we gotta see if it starts and then we gotta go ride it. And then the real challenge is gonna be to race it and see if this thing will last and see how we can do on it. Um, so. We're gonna get right into it without further ado. Uh, we're just gonna start putting the subframe on, the plastics, tank, chain. Um, yeah, we're just gonna get right to it. to run last year's plastics and graphics just because I haven't got my graphics in yet and I don't want to just ruin brand new plastic so these already have graphics on them and um, they're a little scratched up but it'll definitely look a lot better than this bike did so we're gonna throw these on stinks because I'm gonna get everything done on the bike and then I'm gonna show you guys and it's gonna kind of look like trash because I got old plastic on it so forgive me for that but at least it's gonna run good I hope so at least <laughs> don't be calling me while I'm working on bike hello filter in and now we're waiting on this big tank over here um, of course gonna have a big tank for off-road and uh, long races and stuff but this tank currently has some issues um, it's the there's no pet cock on it uh, waiting on the seal for the dry break so once we get that then we can put it on and so we're gonna jump to the front of the bike and uh, do the fork guards. So already got the fender and number plate on, as you can see there. Gonna throw these uh, fork guards on.
Okay, so while I'm looking at that, it looks like I'm gonna have to add a link to it because it is just too tight. That is about as close as I can get it with the chain box as I can. And it's pretty tight there. So I probably am gonna add a link. That extra link is just temporary. I'm just keeping it in there until the chain gets a little stretched out and broke in. Then I'll take it out and have the full chain but for now i needed it in there so i wasn't gonna break the chain or stretch it just straight off the bat so got it in there and uh yeah now we're on to the tank and the seat and then we'll see if it starts i think oh we gotta put oil and coolant in it Final touches are going on the ice. Now is the moment we've been waiting for. Roll it out here, see if she starts, and then uh, we're gonna go racing this thing this weekend, hopefully. Um, let's see if it starts and see how it runs. I forgot to mention one thing. Still got the red wheels on it, but don't worry. I've got some silver ones, just some older stock wheels to go on it. So don't worry about that. And then also the water pump. Um, I didn't film any of that just because I wasn't really sure what I was getting into, but it was just a little seals and the water pump. If you guys saw the first video, it was leaking coolant. So I think we got that fixed. So let's start it up without further ado. Boom, it runs. Well, we finally did it. As you guys saw in that last clip, the bike started. The idle was a little high, but uh, all it took was a little bit of uh, adjusting the air screw and idle and got it perfect. So um, yeah, we're finally done with this thing. It took way longer than I thought it would. Uh, had some hiccups along the way and just regular stuff working on bikes. but. We got her done and now she's ready to ride other than graphics and then I think I'm going to go ahead and order an OEM bottom end so that way I will have it when this one goes or I may just throw it in there um, before so we don't have to even worry about it. But right now it's running awesome and we should be good to go for a while. Uh, just don't trust the hot rod crank quite as much. Yeah, without further ado, we can just go through the parts. Let me know what you guys think about the red wheels. I know some of you guys are hating on them and some of you guys may like them. So, I don't know. It's kind of up in the air. I got a set of stock wheels, so it's just silver. And may put those on, may keep these. I don't know. I got two sets of wheels, so we're good to go. But we're going to go through some parts. And then we're going to go ride this thing and then go race it. So starting up here in the front, uh, probably the first thing you guys can notice is we got new plastics all the way around with the forks. We sent off the suspension, both the front and the rear. So a uh, local guy, Terry Brumley, he does good stuff and he's done my YZs in the past. So I knew it was good. Moving up, we got some ride engineering uh, bar clamps that will fit the oversized bars because this bike came with 
small bars, the 7 8 so we went to the 1 and 1 8 I believe it is. And then we put flex bars on that. We put a new throttle cable, new clutch cable, and then obviously you can see the big tank. We already had that sitting around. Shined up the pipe as best I could, WD-40, and just a lot of scrubbing on it. He put new clutch plates, clutch springs, made sure the clutch basket was good. Uh, as far as the motor goes, we did a new top end, uh, all the top end gaskets and stuff. The cylinder, we were able to just kind of hone the marks out and also uh, with the head, it had some detonation, but um, talked to some buddies and it was fine. It wasn't terrible, so we just left it like that. And that's another part I'm thinking about getting is a new head. I've heard some of the heads are pretty good and can add a little bit to these bikes. So thinking about getting one of those, but this one will be good for now. And then we did a JD Jet Kit. We also put a seven ounce flywheel weight in it, uh, kind of turning this thing into a woods weapon. After the flywheel weight, um, kind of in the middle of the bike now, we got the Tusk like Kickstarter. And the reason I went with that, the old one was all rattling. And then this one, um, Tusk is known, they kind of have a little bit cheaper parts, but with everything that I've ran with them, I've had good luck, so went with that. With the linkage, we had to go through all those bearings, except the swing arm bearings. I don't know why, but those ended up having quite a bit of grease in them, so they look good, and just re-grease those and put them back. Put a new seat cover on. I also did a new chain, and sprockets look pretty good. And I ended up going with a 50 tooth on the rear and 14 on the front. Probably a little bit better for the woods. And like I said, we're trying to make this thing a woods weapon. So put those on there. And then a shark fin that I had left over, just the rear rotor guard. Uh, and then also a skid plate just to kind of up that protection and make it a little bit more bulletproof. So I think that's about all we did with the bike. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. We're going to go ride it now and then go race. So. That'll be the real test, and we'll see you guys in those videos. Be sure to check out the full series, and thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the build series on the 2007 YZ125, but be sure to subscribe and turn on your bell notifications so you guys can stay tuned and don't miss another one of these episodes. Um, there's going to be a few of them, and if you guys missed them, be sure to check out the last ones and get caught up. Stay tuned, guys. We'll see you in the next video.